The film takes place in the small town of Vengenberg, where a young girl named Jennifer lives with a skewed face and a disgusting hump in the family of a cattleman. Because of the ugly appearance, the girl is constantly mocked by the locals, and one day when Jennifer is once again mocked by a couple of local young men, the girl accidentally opens a portal to the magical Tor Lara in Aretuza, where she's met by the young wizard Istred. The guy is concerned. All magic leaves traces, which wizards can use to find someone who has even an ounce of magic in them. He decides to save the budding sorceress and opens a safe portal that brings Yennefer home. Time later, a beautiful and wealthy lady arrives at the farm of the girl's father to buy a pig. But upon seeing the girl, she expresses a desire to buy her too. And the father, who does not hide his disgust for his daughter, sells her for half the price of the animal, despite the pleas of her mother, who recognizes the lady as a witch. So Yennefer finds herself in the magical school of the Enchantress to Syed of Reeves, where several girls are already studying. At first, Yennefer takes the separation from home hard, and how low her father judged her. She even tried to commit suicide, but when classes begin, she discovers that the young wizard was right. It was her inadvertent wizardry that caused a wave and caught the attention of the school's rector, the wizardess Tisaya. The girls who study at the school have also distinguished themselves with the same unique skills. Soon Tisaya holds the first test. The girls must lift a stone and a flower without touching them and using a spell. Everyone more or less manages to cope with the task, but Yennefer fails. The girl stubbornly tries again and again until Tisaya stops her. Frustrated, Yennefer runs away. Later, she finds Istrid in the cave and tells him her name. Sometime later, Tisaya trains her female pupils to recognize man's greatest fear. She sees the girls in pairs and orders them to look into each other's eyes until they get inside their rival schemes. Jennifer pairs up to encourage the girl, but she again fails. Tisaya is enraged. Jennifer is useless. And this is because she's lying to herself. Even if she were a beauty, no one would love her. Although she's not the only one to whom she has problems, Jennifer shares the problems with her only friend, Istrid, who talks about her schooling. He too was having a hard time with everything. The boy offers to read his mind, and the girl succeeds. One night, Tisaya wakes the girls in the middle of a storm and takes them to the Tor Lara, the most powerful magic place in the continent, entrance to which is only open to members of the Wizard Brotherhood. Today, there will be a test in the art of controlling the flows of chaos, which requires catching lightning in a bottle. The girls do not believe in such a possibility, and some get strong discharges even after catching the lightning. Yennefer's turn comes, and she reaches up with the bottle, but it is thrown back against the wall. Enraged, she directs her power at her more fortunate opponent, Tisaya blocking her mental blow. Later, she reprimands her apprentice she almost killed today, which means that her emotions can ruin her own. Tisaya cannot be sure that Yennefer will not go along with her feelings and harm her school, for she's to become a court sorceress, and the weak have no place near a ruler. The Enchantress already doubts that there's anything in her that the Wizarding Chapter needs. Frustrated, Yennefer tells Istrid everything. But most importantly, the Enchantress knows all about them and they won't be able to see each other again. The guy is willing to show her other, more ancient and powerful magic, but it is very dangerous. He shows her the skulls of the dead elves who built Aretuza. They were the first wizards of the continent and they were the ones who built all the magical places. But humans came to the continent and slaughtered them. Istrid gives her a flower that can only grow where the elder blood rests and reads a spell, which by repeating it, the girl opens a portal. The astonished wizard does not understand how she managed to do it the first time, and Yennefer confesses that her real father was a half-elf who died in the purge. It was his blood that made her ugly. The boy kisses Yennefer and confesses his love. Later, she shows to Sai the flower. It turns out that this was her assignment, to get the plant by applying the skills of false emotion. Yennefer hopes to be elevated. The enchantress promises that she will soon hear a knock and know when it is time. Meanwhile, Istrid is also reporting to his mentor, Strigobor, about what he has learned about the girl. One night, Yennefer hears a knock at her neighbor's door and, taking the flower, goes after them. She peeks out as Tisaya turns the four of them into eels. The Enchantress knows the girl is here and orders her to come out and push her former fellow students into the water. They are now the conduits of magic for Aretuza. Yennefer performs this and then sees many silhouettes of former schoolmates in the water. Time passes. Yennefer enjoys a love affair with Istrid, applying what she has learned to enhance the effect of intimacy. 
Thus, one day she created a whole crowd that watched her intimacy and then rewarded the lovers with applause. The guy is amazed at her imagination. What will she come up with next time? So the day of the final rite is approaching, after which they will be masters of their own destiny. Yennefer dreams of graduating from Aretuza and returning to her native Adern as a powerful sorceress to show her long-time abusers and her father what she's been able to achieve. In addition, all Aretuza graduates are perfected before being sent to the different kingdoms. All physical defects are removed, which awaits Yennefer as well. The wizard in charge shows her his work, the flawless beauty of the graduates, and promises her an equally wonderful result. He suggests making her color and noble but strong gray. Tisai, on the other hand, teaches her to look in the mirror and see what Yennefer herself wants. She orders the girl to close her eyes and imagine the most powerful woman in the world. Yennefer complies with the order but does not yet see the promised beauty. Meanwhile, the chapter of wizards gathers in Aretuza to decide where their graduates should go, for all kings need court wizards. Then it transpires that one of the leaders of the council, the wizard Stregobor, knows that Yennefer is a quarter elf, which means that she will not be accepted at Aretuza, where there is a prejudice against elves. The chapter votes to send Yennefer to Nilfgaard, which the aspiring enchanter does not like. She demands an audience with the chapter, but Tissaia declares herself in charge of the distribution. Yennefer is beside herself. She has no intention of wasting her life serving the king of a small southern kingdom and a lover of women. The tutor reminds her of the elven blood, and the girl understands how Stregobor knew about it. The initiation ceremony begins, which Yennefer does not attend. Worried, Istrid finds you behind the letter to her father, asking him to confirm that she is his own daughter. The boy does not believe that this letter can convince the chapter. But the girl simply does not know what to do, for even if Istrid disproves his words about her origins, no one will believe him anymore. The enchanter is frustrated, he didn't know why Stregobor needed this information. And she has already missed all the initiation spells. Istrid suggests that she should go with him, for he has been offered to become an explorer. They can travel the continent and discover the unknowable. But unexpectedly, the girl cruelly ridicules his plan. She's not going to dig through the dust of the ages at all. And these are his dreams and intentions. And her opinion, as always, he does not even ask. Istrid is shocked. Yennefer is not at all what he thought she was. And he expresses his opinion that she's angry because she missed her chance to find beauty. But a girl needs power. And she didn't experience so much hardship studying at the magic school for nothing. Yennefer runs to the enchanter, who is in charge of perfection, and demands to show her art, not even the lack of a potion to dull the terrible pain that accompanies the transformation process stops her. As the magician begins the process, Yennefer asks for her eyes and the cut marks on her hands as a reminder of her former weakness, and the wizard informs her that every magic has a price. Having been reborn, she will not be able to walk. But the girl agrees to everything, even to the removal of her womb necessary for a complete transformation. The magician reads spells, and the girl screams in terrible pain and rips the chains with which she was tied to the table. Her spine straightens, her entire body seems to melt and shift from one form to another. Finally writhing in pain, Yennefer loses consciousness. Meanwhile, in the main hall of Aretuza, the initiation ball continues. Suddenly, Tisaya sees a door opening in which stands an unusually beautiful girl with violet eyes. She realizes that Yennefer has disobeyed her orders and hurries to take her away. But it is too late. The Adern ruler has already noticed the beauty. He invites her to a dance where he expresses his desire to see her as court wizard in his kingdom. Tisaya has to retreat and only watch the dance of the king and the enchantress from afar. Directed based on a series of books by Sapkowski, The Witcher is quite curious, fascinating, and vivid. The atmosphere of magic, the world of monsters and steel swords transferred quite well. So the adventures of the female protagonist will be even more exciting in the next episodes.